The general parts of what makes a basic spawn room are the room itself, separated from the gameplay space of your map, doors, usually more than one, preventing enemies from seeing into the room unless someone is walking out, spawn points defining where the player will stand in the room, a respawn room trigger that tells the game where players can change classes without dying and where engineered buildings cannot be built, a resupply cabinet, and a no entry barrier that keeps the enemy team out. We have our set of team filter doors already from the last episode, so let's make some spawn points to put them in front of. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to put our spawn rooms on either side of our current boxy room here. The first step will be moving our doors into place and cutting holes in the walls for them. I'm going to select both our trigger brush and the door, and looking at the top view, I'm going to drag them into the wall here. I'm going to place it off-center, as I'm going to create a second door for each team. It's always a good idea to give your players more than one option coming out of their spawn room, as only one exit can lead to frustrating spawn camping. Now with just our door selected, I'm going to look at our side view. This is the shape we want to cut out of our wall. We're going to do these cuts using the clipping tool. We'll select the wall we want to cut and cut straight across the top, matching our door's height. Make sure both sides of the wall are showing white lines after you draw your cut, so we keep both sections. If either side is red, hit the clipping tool button again until it's correct. Once our line is ready, hit enter to make the cut. Now deselect the wall and reselect just the lower portion where our door is. We're going to make two more cuts to match the width of our door. Now we can select the chunk covering our door here and hit delete. I'm going to select the door and trigger again and hit Control c to copy it. I want to create a copy of it for our second exit. However, if we just copy and paste the way our logic is set up, both doors will open at the same time if the trigger volume is entered. This is because both doors will be named the same thing and both triggers will be targeting it. So now what we can do is go to our top-down 2D view and right-click. Select Paste Special. This brings up a bunch of options to play around with. The important one we are going to check is Make Pasted Entity Names Unique. This gives our door a unique name and updates our trigger volume's output to match it. Hit OK. By default, the new copy is on top of the old, so we just need to drag it off and move it to where we want our new exit. I want to make these doors symmetrically even, so I'm going to create a temporary brush and use it to measure from our green center line here in the top-down view. Now we delete our measurement tool and repeat the cutting process for this new door. Because we started with the horizontal cut originally, we only have to do our vertical slices. As of now, because our doors are brush entities and not something that can seal the world, our map is leaking. So let's super ninja time lapse here and create new floors, walls, and ceiling for our first spawn room. The door is filtered for red, so we are going to change some of our dev textures to red to indicate which side of the map is which. It's always a good idea to keep team recognition in mind even in a map's early development. The new room we're going to create is going to be 1024 by 512 with 16 hammer unit thick walls. I'm also going to toss in a standard light entity or two just to make sure it's not pitch black in here. Now that we have our room built, we're going to copy the spawn point from the center here and paste it into the new room, making sure it's facing the right way so players can head straight out the doors after spawning. We're going to change its team property to red, and then we're going to copy it around a bunch of times. We want multiple spawn points in our room so players don't spawn inside of each other. A good rule of thumb is to have at least 12 spawn points for each team, as this represents a full 24 player server. It doesn't hurt to bump that up to 16 though, as some servers run 32 players. When copying these spawn points around, make sure you leave them enough room in between and away from any walls, floors, or props, otherwise they won't work. They can be sort of finicky at times, but after a bit of trial and error, you'll figure it out. I also like to select every spawn point and group them together with the Group Selected Objects button at the top here, as this makes it easier to select them all later for any changes. Next, we are going to define the space as a spawn room, so we'll need to select the trigger material. And then we'll draw a box over our entire room. It's a good idea to fill in the space our doors are in as well. It's okay if the trigger material Z fights with the outer wall, as it won't actually show up in-game. Now we're going to make sure our trigger is selected and hit Ctrl T to make it an entity brush. Change it to Funk underscore Respawn Room. When the players are inside this volume, it will give players instant respawn when they change class, it blocks engineers from building in it, and it forces players to drop the intelligence if they're holding it for the CTF game mode. Now give the spawn room a quick name. I'm going to do respawn room underscore red underscore one, and then change the team property to red. Next, we are going to create a resupply locker for our players to restore their health and ammo. A resupply locker is actually two parts, the model of the locker itself, and a funk underscore regenerate, which is actually what is doing all the work. The prop is just there for looks. First, we will create the prop underscore dynamic as the model will be animated, and set the model to a resupply underscore locker. We'll give this prop the name resupply underscore red underscore one. Move this prop against the wall. I'm going to put mine between our two doors here. Next, we'll make a trigger volume for a prop and tie it to a funk underscore regenerate. This area is what the player must touch to regenerate, so don't make it too large. Some people like to set the team for these, but I personally don't see the need, as anyone from the opposing team shouldn't be in this room anyway, so we'll leave it set to any. 
Now last, we need to put the name of our resupply locker prop in the associated model property. This tells the model to animate and open its doors when a player walks into the trigger. Now the last piece of our respawn room are the no entry barriers that block the opposing team from entering the room. This is called a respawn room visualizer. This entity can be seen in game as a big red no entry sign if you approach a spawn room that isn't for your team. First we're going to go to the material browser and select the no draw material. This material is completely invisible in game. Create a brush that's big enough to block the doorway of our spawn room. It doesn't have to be edge to edge, just big enough that a player can't squeeze through it. If you aren't 100% sure about that, just fill the whole doorway. Now we need to set the front face of this brush to the no entry sign. We can select only one face of a brush by using the toggle texture application tool here. This will bring up the face edit sheet window and will allow you to left click on a face to select it. Select the side of the brush facing out of our spawn and browse for the material no underscore entry. Hit apply to set it. You'll notice that it creates a bunch of smaller no entry signs. If you want it to be just one large sign, try playing with the justify portion of this window. You can hit fit here to make it stretch over your entire brush and the center button to center it. If it stretches your sign in a way you don't like, you can adjust the scale at the top left here. Feel free to play around with this window and learn what it does. You have a lot of control over how your materials appear on a face. Now we will select the visualizer and hit Control T. We will make it a funk underscore respawn room visualizer. Set the associated respawn room property to the name of your funk respawn room trigger volume's name. In our example, respawn room underscore red underscore one. The cool feature of the visualizer entity is that it inherits the team of the respawn room it's associated with. So for example, say the respawn room changes owners, like it does in some maps to change spawn rooms, the visualizer will update itself to block the appropriate team. And now we should have a fully working spawn room. Let's do a fast compile and make sure everything is working in game. You can see that if we spawn on a blue team, we spawn outside of our new spawn room. Approaching it, we see our no entry visualizers fade in and our doors don't open. Changing teams, we should now spawn inside. Keep in mind that our spawn point outside is still set to any team, so if you spawn outside it's not necessarily a bad thing. Check to make sure the resupply locker works and that we can get in and out of the doors unimpeded. And try changing classes a few times to make sure the spawn points are working, and that our respawn room trigger is letting us instantly change. If you have any issues with any of this, go back and check the specific part of the spawn room that handles the problem aspect. Now that we know everything is working properly for red team, let's hop back into hammer and copy everything over for blue side. Go to the opposing wall and delete it and the skybox above it. Go to the selection tool and draw a box in your top view that is surrounding your entire spawn room on red side, plus the wall and visualizers. Hit enter. Deselect the floor and skybox ceiling brush by hitting Control left click on them. Shift drag and release the whole thing to copy it over to the other side. Hit Control m to bring up the transform menu. Make sure the rotate mode is selected and type in 180 in the Z value. This rotates everything 180 degrees on the Z axis. Line the walls back up manually if they aren't already. Now hit Control shift r to bring up the Replace menu. We're going to replace red with blue for this selection only. This will change all the names we entered to blue team specific and change our doors again to doors filtered for blue. This means we can delete the extra one we created in the last episode. The only thing this doesn't change is anything in a drop down menu. So for our example, our respawn room trigger is still set to red team. Double click on that brush entity and change it to blue manually. Now with a quick compile, everything should now be working for both teams. Give it a quick runaround test, check that everything is working correctly, try respawning a few times, make sure the lockers are working, make sure you can't get into opposing team's room. Maybe even try building as an engineer and see if you can exploit your way into the other team's room. If you can, figure out why. It's up to the mapper to head off any exploits as early as possible, as even the smallest exploit can ruin a test for your players and give them a negative view of your map early. In the next episode, we are going to finally cover how to give your map the king of the hill or arena logic, and we will have ourselves a fully working, albeit tiny map.